Welcome to this video where I'm going to be talking about Claude Code sub agents in a bit more detail. I'm going to be going through the system that I've actually created, how I created it, and how you can create a system for yourselves. Now, the first thing I want to know is that this is really easy. You don't even really need to use your brain. Now, what I did, the I call these custom Claude codes, okay? I previously had a even more popular custom Claude code, which was this WordPress one right here. This one here, this is the WordPress Claude code wizard. Now, the only real thing that changes between these two, now this one obviously has a few more, um, like .py files, .sh files, and things like that to achieve its goals. But all it is, is the .claude folder. You can effectively do whatever you want with the .claude folder. Now, if I just go on this previous one, this is what it previously looked like. And I modeled my new one on this system. Again, all I've done is change the .claude folder. So let's take a little look at that in a bit more detail. Now, just to clarify what this system actually does, it's so interesting to me, guys. I didn't even know this was possible, okay? Now, this works in the following way. Instead of having one Claude Code conversation where you send a prompt and then you hope that it completes itself within the 200,000 context window, instead, what we have here is a brand new system that can use the 200,000 context window to orchestrate as many of these sub agents as possible. Now you can see here, it does still need to compact. Eventually it will run out of contact. But if we added up all of the tokens within these sub agents, you can see each time we have a tester, we have stuck and we have coder. All of these different, they're basically mini Claude conversations. If you added up all of the tokens that we used during these conversations, it would probably add up to more than a million. What does this mean? It means that I was completely wrong about subagents. They actually have a huge use case and they're very, very, very powerful, right? So how did I actually make this system? Well, I will tell you right now how I made it and how you can make your own. I wouldn't necessarily say change too much about what I have here. If you do want to make your own system, if you think it needs a new agent or whatever, then keep watching. Basically, what you all you need to do if you wanted to make your own system is you CD well, MKD into uh, your system, CD your system, right? Git clone and then the link and then a full stop. And then in, if I write Claude, <clears throat> you'll see it says mcp.json uh, playwright, which means that um, this is the correct system. This is an independent agentic Claude uh, code. I call them custom Claude's. Basically, all it is is it, it's a GitHub repo with a .claude file that has a Claude.md, and then in this case, it also has agents and normally something like an MCP um, setup, where if you need to use some kind of MCP, in this case, I'm using Playwright for testing. You can actually see that it pops up immediately. So if I write slash MCP, then my custom Claude code has Playwright ready to go. So how do you actually make one of these systems? Well, let's say we wanted to, I don't know, let's say we wanted to add a new agent that is a research agent with the power of Gina. Now I'm just gonna do a very quick example here. I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but basically there are two types of Gina. There's S.Gina and R.Gina. I'm just gonna give it both of those. Okay, and then I'm gonna say, Create a new agent in my system inside the agents folder called research agent. And then I can do option enter to do a new line on the terminal on Mac. Don't know what it is on Windows. Sorry, Windows guys. I've started to use Mac for all of my coding because it's just superior. I'm not going to lie. Research agent. The research <clears throat> agent should have access to a Gina service, which uses Gina to find specific documentation on the topic. Uh, when can the research agent actually activate? Just at the beginning, I guess. Where's my cookie? Okay, so you can kind of get a free API from Gina just to practice. So this is 541,000 tokens. Should be enough for now. Use this API key for Gina. 
Uh, and then when should the research agent activate? The research agent should activate um, when a new technology is raised by uh, bef no by the orchestrator before the coding agent is activated. It should store this um, content. And the orchestrator should pass the reference on to the coding agent. Now, this isn't necessarily how you'd make your own system. If you wanted to just completely revamp my system, just change the prompt. But if I press enter here, maybe you guys can actually start to understand how to make these yourselves. So I'll help you create a research agent that uses genus fetch documentation for the coding agent is, in, is invoked. Let me break this down into actionable tasks. So it's going to look for the agents folder. At the moment, it's just found .claude. Let's see if it can actually identify the agents folder. Let me, there we go. So it's just found them. Oh, I've locked out, guys. Sorry. you got to, no, no XP waste, guys. No XP waste. So let me update the to-do and create the research agent. Perfect. By the way, guys, RuneScape is the perfect game if you want to play um, and work at the same time. It's literally perfect. A few more things to mention, guys. I'm going to be putting a lot of what I'm talking about in today's video into the school community eventually in much more detail. I'm really, really interested in Claude Code with sub-agents. So if you do want a little bit more help or a little bit more information with what you can do with these, check out the school community. It will be one of the links in the description of this video. That is my YouTube. Okay, so what do we have here? We have it basically is just creating a new file, .claude slash agents slash research.md. Let's see. There we go. It has the Gina service. And let's see. Let's just press enter here. And then we'll see if this has worked. Now, remember, all of these, every single one has its own 200,000 context window. You'll be very, very hard pressed to kind of hit the 200,000 context window. I built an entire project with probably one to two million tokens used overall by Claude, and I didn't hit the context window. So that's where things start to get super, super interesting indeed. So it's trying to create a helper script. I don't think it needs one. So I'm going to say, let's try it out. Please add the knowledge of the latest agent to the Claude.md file. Now, a lot of people might think, oh, what about orchestrator agent, orchestrator agent? People are obsessed with orchestrator agent. What I did instead was I made Claude itself the orchestrator. So it says, you are the orchestrator. This is the Claude.md file. I think this is a much better system because to have a separate entity separate context window to do all of the orchestration of the project is it, it's basically stupid it's like your your body doesn't talk to your arms and you expect to get the job done right it, it, just, it just won't work because it, it has a different context window this in my opinion is the only way to do it and it's also the best way to do it and people are agreeing with me people are already saying that they've tried this out there was someone on Reddit who said that it was an absolute bloody life changer for them. So definitely check this out, guys. You might think, oh, but, it, you know, what about BMAD or what about whatever? Just quickly on the uh, Claude Flow or whatever. Those things for me, they might be really, really good. But for me, they just are overly complicating the problem, right? BMAD, Claude Flow, they're just a bit gimmicky. It's more like, yeah, you can see that what they're doing is amazing if the models were amazing. The problem is the models aren't amazing, so it's like trying to, it's it's like trying to go to the moon in a rocket ship, um, strapped to a a Fiat five hundred or something, right? It just doesn't make sense because like the, it's it's far too it's too complicated for the system that you have or like the intelligence that we have, right? It's just not, these models are not intelligent enough to go off and autonomously create massive apps and projects and SASs. It's just, it, it's not possible. I guarantee you, if you look through all of the code that BMAD or Claude Flow created, a lot of it would be fallbacks, assumptions, errors, continuing when stuck and implementing workarounds. That's why I actually introduced this stuck agent as well. 
every single time the model actually gets stuck, it feeds back to the human and it says, I'm stuck. I'm considering using a fallback or a hard coded test. What should I do? This is the problem, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna say, are you done? Like, hurry up. I don't know what is taking so long. I'm tempted to change to haiku just because of how long this is actually taking. Now, this is a concept that I've talked about for a very long time, but iteration prompting. This is so key to what we are talking about today. I will show you exactly how I iterate prompt for this process. Once this finishes, what I basically do is I say now push to GitHub, right? And then I get the link ready. So let's just go here. This should say uh, one minute ago or now, very shortly. Let's see. Come on, hurry the, I don't know what is wrong with Cloud Code. Get on with it. Okay, I just started using um, Haiku because I don't know what Sonnet was doing there. It was taking forever. This should be done any second. This will change to now. Perfect. So what I can do now is I can copy this, and this is how I iterate, right? Let's go to a new one here. I don't know what this even is. Whatever. CD dot dot. MKD iteration, CD iteration, Claude, no, no, sorry, git, clone that, and then full stop, and then Claude, and then I'm going to say, like, make me, oh, I'll just give it the school community prompt, because that's what I've been testing it with. So I'm not saying I'm actually adding this to the system, I, I just wanted to show you guys how I make these concepts, and what I'm working with, and the point of it, etc., etc. So let's grab this and let's see if this works. So what we should see here is the second that the orchestrator, I think I'm still using Haiku actually, so I might need to change. But the second that the orchestrator passes the task or Claude code itself, passes the task on to the coder. So let me first examine this. Okay, there is no project, that's fine. Let's see if we can work that out. Haiku, pretty intelligent to be honest with you. I was actually quite impressed with Haiku. Let's see if it can get first the past hurdle, the, the first hurdle, which is creating the Next.js project. Looks like it might have smashed it there. Nope, still getting stuck on the shell commands thing. Okay, so it's just gonna create it manually. I don't like it when it does this personally. It's now gonna scaffold an entire project just because it can't run shell commands, which is kind of annoying, but it is what it is. I just wanna see if it actually does any of the research stuff. Remember this is, um, the wrong model. I wouldn't necessarily use Haiku for any of this. So I'm just seeing what happens here because I'm curious to see if Haiku can handle this issue as well as Sonnet. So let's see, thinking. So now it should see now because Haiku just isn't intelligent in my, it's not intelligent enough. Now, nah. okay. So let's just exit out here and then CD dot dot MKD iteration two. Uh, CD iteration two, git clone. There we go. Let's just grab the GitHub real quick. Okay, so let's try this again. Let's this time let's set the model to um, Sonic four point five. Send the prompt and let's see if it does the research task that we gave it. Yeah, you can actually see it says next research next JS fourteen. I one eight and routing and static site generation best practices. So let's actually see research, research next yes. So right now it's doing there we go. Perfect. You can see how this works, guys. I've added a new agent in front of you guys in under 20 minutes. I'm not saying this is what you should do necessarily. I don't even know if I believe in these research agents right now. I need to test this. I'm not saying do this, do this, do that. I'm not saying make this agent, make that agent. What I'm saying is, or what I'm showing you, is how I created this system that I created, which in my opinion is actually a game changer because it doesn't just forget what it's doing anymore. Claude Code will no longer forget what it's doing. You no longer have to run a slash compact every fucking five minutes. Honestly, guys, Claude Code or Agent Orchestration System V2, spread the message far and wide, guys. In my opinion, it's one of the best systems that we will see for... AI coding. This is the best part. There's no context pollution. There's no pollution. There's no confusion. There's just four, or in this case, five extremely simple agents that work together well. I do want to see 
if the research agent does successfully pass on this information. But I just love this entire system, honestly. I absolutely love it. I think I'll leave the video here, guys. I'm going to continue experimenting with this. If you want more content like this on sub-agents, leave a comment, let me know, and I will continue. I did get a few comments yesterday saying, holy crap, this is amazing, thank you, uh, please keep working on this. In which case, I will keep working on it. I will probably keep the research agent, just because I can't see it being a negative, and I can only see it being a positive. It looks like something about the Gina request here. I know, it looks like it's... Um... Looks like it's succeeding, actually. Yeah, I'll leave the video there, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, you're an absolute legend. Check out the school community if you want. And I will see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.